So here's a quick video on how I work on shoe tying with our visually impaired students. So I always start by letting our students check out the shoe and just explore it and then talk about language so that we have a consistent communication basis. So we talk about the toe of the shoe, the front of the ankle, the back of the ankle, the heel, the sole, the flat or the white lace, the black or the round lace, and then these little plastic pieces at the end. These are called aglets. I teach my kids this, but if you call them plastic pieces, they'll still know what you're talking about. So after they have talked about the language, um, I just give them a few minutes to explore it, check out the laces, the tongue inside, just get familiar with the shoe. A lot of our kids have had elastic or Velcro shoes, so are unfamiliar with this lacing pattern. Once they feel pretty comfortable with it, um, I always start by having the shoe face away from the student. So that would be the most um, easy transition away um, when our students start to tie their own shoes and pull their foot up and have access to their shoes so they don't have to reposition um, and um, get familiar with a uh, different positioning in that shoe tying process. So we always start by pulling the laces tight. So we start with one hand on either side of the ankle and pull sideways away. And then we start by taking one lace, doesn't matter which one, and we flop it over the front of the ankle. Sometimes our students who don't have a great concept of understanding how shoes tie will try to go around the back of the ankle. So we emphasize front of the ankle. Then we find where they meet or touch and we pinch in that spot. We determine which lace is on top. In this case, it's the black round lace. So we take the shoelace and go and find the end to find the aglet. We're gonna poke that aglet up through the bottom towards the top in that space between our thumb and the ankle. We're gonna grab the anklet and pull sideways. Sometimes students have a hard time finding the aglet and figuring out what to do with their hands in this situation. So sometimes they will let go with where they're pinching and grab the aglet and then find it with the other arm and so they're crossed in a pretzel in front and then they wanna pull sideways. This will work, but it also puts you in kind of an awkward position. So I don't make a huge deal of it. I just ask my students to not cross their arms. So if they end up into this, I just ask them to move back. So this is called our first knot. That's usually, we work on this first step and that's where I stop until they have this completely independent. The next step is making the loop and I work on this step until they have that completely independently. And I generally encourage my kids to start with their non-dominant hand. I'm right-handed, so I'm gonna start with my left. And I'm gonna make a medium loop at the ankles pinching with three fingers, my thumb, my index, and my middle. Some students will wanna make this little teeny tiny lace, which won't give them enough to work with. Some students wanna make a big floppy lace. This is too much, they won't be able to make their knot. If a student has a really hard time being able to determine what a medium size is after being shown a couple of times, I will have them wrap up two or three fingers in that loop to give them um, kind of a tactile understanding of how big that loop needs to be. I do this until they have it completely independent. This sometimes takes a while to be able to get. Once they have that down, we use our other lace, in this case it's the black round lace, and we are going to go over our middle, over our index, around the loop, and over our thumb. And then once they have that, we can move on, but this is where I stop until they have this completely independently. Um, sometimes it's hard for students to be able to get over middle, over index, and over the loop. Sometimes they want to do this where it doesn't go around the loop. But we want over middle, over index, around loop, over thumb. And then we're gonna have them push this lace in between our index and our middle finger and pinch it. So over middle, over index, around loop, over thumb, and then in between our index and our middle. And then we're going to pinch our index and our middle together and hold here. And I will stop there until they have that completely independently. Once they have that, we remove our thumb. Our dominant hand takes the loop we've already had made. In this case, it's our white round one. 
and we're gonna move our index and our middle finger sideways while continuing to pinch. This is going to create our second loop. We pull sideways and we pull that until it's tight. If students are um, low tone or have a little bit of an issue with fine motor, sometimes I teach sideways and down to create a tight knot. So once we have that, it's a big, huge party, and we just work on that until they're completely independently. And then I will have, teach my students to check and make sure that the aglet doesn't touch below the sole of the shoe and do it on both the round lace and the flat lace. If they are too long, they are too long and they're touching under the sole of the shoe, then we figure out which one it is. In this case, it's white and flat, and we pull that loop sideways until it's tight and short. Still a little bit long, so we're gonna keep pulling until it's a better length. And that's how I work on shoe time. This process can take a long time. So please be patient, please work in steps. It doesn't have to be a long time that you work on it, just a couple minutes, um, maybe every day, maybe a couple times a week until your kiddo gets it.